In order to provide quality of service to our microservices in a distributed system, we follow different practices and patterns to safeguard our services. In this video, we are going to discuss two different strategies and compare them on how we can leverage these strategies to safeguard our services when we have a scaling problem. So the agenda goes like this. We will be looking at what is rate limiting and load shedding. I'll also show you when to use these two patterns. And finally, we will close off with a case study using Zerodha or a Robinhood trading platform. So if you had seen my exponential back off video, I had used this exact similar pattern for explaining what is exponential back off um, using the rate limiters. In this video, we're going to also discuss the load shedding, how we can do load shedding and what load shedding is and how it can help us safeguard our systems. With that, let's get started. So what is rate limiting? Let's imagine I have an application or I have even multiple instances of the application which can do auto scaling. I have multiple APIs which this particular application is exposing. For example, I do have like get post, uh, get all products, get individual products and also updation of products. I want to safeguard my service so that I don't want one particular client to consume all my resources on that particular service. So what we can do is we can limit the calls per API per client. So we can come up with some limits specific to these APIs. For example, I can say that I can have only 100 RPS for a particular client for getting all the products. But I am going to give only 5 RPS for creating more products. Same way, I'm going to have 300 RPS. So RPS denotes request per second. So we can get only 100 requests per second for getting all the products. We can get 300 requests per second for getting individual products. Same way, I can update my products parallelly only five times within a second. And this all applies to an individual client. Same way, I can also enforce multiple rate limiting logic saying, in addition to this, I can also have an across the client um, rate limiting where I can define something like, okay, this is my exhaustive list. If something goes beyond this, I want to limit the number of requests which are coming in. And if that particular client exceeds this number of requests, then we will be obviously sending a HTTP 429. 429 denotes too many requests in the HTTP uh, error codes standards. So we will be using 429 to send the users back saying that, okay, there are too many requests, so you cannot call the service now, try after a while. So the client now knows, okay, I'm hitting the server too many times and the threshold is getting hit, so I cannot call multiple times now. So rate limiting is used when we want to provide API level threshold to control incoming requests to the application. Now, what is load shedding on the other hand? Let's take the same app. Let's take the same set of APIs, which the application has. However, I want to limit my calls for a particular service. So here, if I look at it, I have two different services. I do have my auto scaling configured. So the two services can exceed to four. But what happens if it exceeds more than four? Right now, how do I safeguard my service? Of course, rate limiting can send 429s, but what if there is some other parameter using which I want to control my service? So in case of load shedding, we can leverage CPU utilization or current in-flight request or even resource isolation. Google uses CPU utilization to identify and control the requests in order to load shed their service from safeguarding things to go wrong. Same way Facebook uses concurrent in-flight request in order to load shed their servers. Amazon Lambda uses resource isolation in order to segregate or reduce the load shedding which is created per service. So these are different options using which you can control or you can limit the service. Unlike the rate limiting where we were saying, okay, we can control it by the number of requests which are coming in. But in the load shedding, we have different parameters which are at the service level. These are not at the client or the user level or the request level. These are at the service level. So if my service degrades, I know that my service performance is going to degrade. So my service makes sure that so the decisions are made based on the state of the system rather than the client. In the earlier case, it was all dependent on the client specific controls. But in the load shedding, we will be controlling the decisions based on the system rather than the client. So in this case, for load shedding, we will be sending 503 HTTP error code and 503 denotes the server is unavailable. 
which is a classic example of saying that okay you have been bombarding the system now i am making sure that you're not going to call me back again of course 503 denotes retryable you can again retry but it, it clearly distinguishes a rate limiting versus load shedding so the client can easily understand what kind of response code they received and they can act upon it accordingly a classic example of how stripe does load shedding is this graph so stripe controls critical traffic or critical api request and then non critical api request so they do have identified how many requests are genuinely required and then how many are not required if there are more non critical traffic which is like bombarding and the critical traffic are going down they try to reduce the non critical traffic so they try to load shed the non critical traffic and then reduce the calls coming for the non critical by sending 503 er errors and that way the critical traffic is still like falling within the threshold and it is getting served as and when required so when do i use rate limiting and load shedding in order to bring quality of service to your apis you can definitely build rate limiting and load shedding to your individual apis the other option is if let's say one particular client bombards too many requests for your server and that creates a noise noisy neighbor problem because that could bring the whole service down or it could impact the other clients that's another option where we can implement the rate limiting and the load shedding the other thing is how do i prioritize which api to process first so we can identify which apis are important and provide a different level of metric for example i can provide create products with 5 rps but i can provide get products with like 300 rps so you can prioritize the low priority requests with high priority requests so you can use rate limiting and load shedding when you want to use low priority and high priority request based on the apis and finally if the clients or the users can change the pace at which they hit our servers of course we cannot control the rate limiting when you want to have even processing when let's say you're processing some banking transaction right you want to have everything processed but still you can control it so here let's say in case the client can control the rate at which they can retry then we should be definitely using rate limiters and load shedding to safeguard our services now coming to the zero dot trading application let me quickly walk through what happens and this is a hypothetical application imagine i have a platform which is the zero da which is a trading application imagine it like any other trading application i have a mobile application in zero da it's called kite so the mobile application connects to the authentication server provides the username and password and gets a authentication token which is the access token and using the access token it connects to the api gateway the api gateway verifies the token with the authentication server and it connects to a core service called as trade executor so trade executor is the one which is going to exactly match the trade with a national stock exchange or the stock exchange it's going to provide that particular trade to the stock exchange it's going to get the response back and then update the table and also notify um, the whole users via the web sockets there is also historical api which is connected to the api gateway which can be used to query historical information from its database in addition to that there is a upi service using which you can add funds from the payment gateways now since this being a trading application there could be multiple requests coming into the kite application so there is going to be like a lot of traffic coming into the api gateway specifically to be hitting into the trade executor or maybe the historical api so we can limit the users using the rate limiters here so we can apply a rate limiting logic in the api gateway so that we can control the number of requests coming from a client at the api gateway layer itself so it can safeguard our service from more services like more requests hitting into our service and let's say the limit is hit we will be returning a 4292 too many requests so the mobile application knows okay there is too many requests and then it handles that request and shows the use of that you need to retry after a while or you can control that now the rate limiting algorithm will help zero the if they expose the api gateway to other developers because in addition to their mobile application there are a lot of third party servers or systems which are connecting to the api gateway to pull real time stats from the zero the developer api so rate limiting will help them reduce the number of calls from people randomly calling and then bringing their servers down in addition to it let's say there are too many clients there are more and more users who are getting added and in zero da they had a auto scaling configured for the trade executor and it can scale only to a particular point now imagine that the auto scaling limit got exhausted and i want to like control the number of requests i know that every request is lightweight and i know that it cannot exceed a particular memory point in time so i 
come up with a strategy for using the concurrent in-flight request. So I have defined that, okay, if there are more than 10,000 RPS for trade executor at a service level, imagine that trade executor is a fleet of servers. There could be hundreds of servers and individual servers or the service can have a limit. For example, individual service can have a 10,000 RPS limit. And if that particular limit is reached, we can have the load shedder to return 503 servers unavailable. So that way, in addition to the API gateway, depending on the huge growing clients, we can also safeguard our servers in the load shedding op using the load shedding option by returning 503. That way we can retry it after a while. So load shedding helps us in safeguarding our service in addition to the rate limiting, which we've already put in the API gateway. So load shedding is at the service level or the process level and rate limiting can be set at the API level. Let me summarize what we just discussed. Initially, we discussed what is rate limiting and load shedding. Rate limiting is limiting your service to a particular number of requests at the API level. On the other hand, load shedding is limiting the calls based on the service level. This could be based on the CPU utilization or the current concurrent in-flight request or even the resource isolation. We also discussed when to use these strategies. We can use it when we want to have quality of service, we want to reduce noisy neighbor problem, etc. And finally, we just discussed the ZeroDAS trading application using which how we can leverage rate limiters and load traders. I hope this particular video was helpful. If it did, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.